Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Eva from Bohemian Crafting and I'm coming with another part of the 100 days challenge. Today we're gonna create the top cover uh, of our journal. I hope I will show you some interesting ideas and some interesting te techniques. This is what I have created today. And these are also from uh, newspapers and I will share with you how you can get this beautiful uh, beautiful effect on your newspaper piece. I'm gonna show it this way so you can see better. And uh, what wasn't in the tutorial in the video, I just added here one of the uh, newspaper <laughs> finds. This one on the back of my sign here. So I hope you will enjoy this creation and maybe you will find something in interesting. Yesterday we have created this base for our uh, this base of cover for our tomb journal and today I'm gonna decorate this one. Uh, I would like to have here frame around the window and to count the right uh, measurement for the frame I'm gonna show you now. I'm already prepared with one frame and uh, I'm gonna show you how to count how much you should cut from another cardstock, chipboard or any material you are using to get the frame which uh, makes kind of like a cascade that you will see also a small amount of the window edges once you will put your frame on on the book cover. To make a right measurement and to count the right way you will need to get a ruler, paper and write it down. I need some pen. First, what you will measure, it's inside of your window. So this one, it's 15 and a half centimeters. 15 and a half centimeters. And in inches, it is six inches ish. Six inches ish. This one, it's seven centimeters. In inches, it is two and three quarter. When I've been preparing this window, uh, this frame, I knew I would like to see the edges of this window, so. I knew that I will have to count the gap between edge of my window and between frame. This little gap here. So first, try to imagine if you would like to have that, that gap, how big it should be. I counted three millimeters. So first, uh, would you, when you count how large piece you should cut from cardstock, type down the side. So first I'm gonna type down this long side which is 15 and half centimeters and I'm gonna count how big card I need. So I added those three millimeters uh, here, sorry, <laughs> here and three millimeters here because I will have those three millimeters on both sides which makes six millimeters. In inches, it's six inches, and those three millimeters is about one eighth of inch. And one eighth of inch here and one eighth of inch here makes one quarter of inch. Then I knew I would like to have the frame two centimeters here, or two centimeters here, two centimeters thick frame. So I counted two centimeters here, two centimeters here, which makes four centimeters. In inches, two centimeters is about three quarter of inch. So three quarter of inch here, three quarter of inch here. It makes one and half inch. And here, please be, be with me because <laughs> my counting with inches is not that strong. So if I do make mistake, correct me in the comments. I'm totally okay with that. 
<coughs> and then you just need to count it all together. So here it will be 20.1 and here seven and a half, seven and three quarter. Seven and three quarter will be the size of your cardstock here. To counter this uh, other side for the, <laughs> the right measurement, you will remember these two numbers and you will just add this one. So in centimeters, my other counting will be, I'm gonna take another card. So we counted those 15 and a half side. Now I'm gonna count that seven centimeters side and I'm just gonna repeat these numbers plus 0.6 plus four. And in inches, it will be same. We already counted six inches side. So we need to count that uh, other side, which is two and three. Uh, yeah, two and three <laughs> quarter of mine. And I'm gonna, again, write down these another two numbers. One and half, 11.6 centimeters or here, three, four and a half. I think. Am I right with inches? <laughs> Not sure. Yes, it should be. Should be this way. So uh, we do have this number here for centimeters, this number here. So my final card, which I will cut from uh, some cardstock, and I did use again old envelope, will be one side will be 20.1 by. The other side will be 11.6 centimeters or in inches it will be seven and three quarter by where is the yeah, here by four and a half uh, inches this way you can count how large a uh, piece of chipboard cardstock folder you need to cut to create a window, a frame around your window. And then once you do have cut it, the card, I do have it here. Uh, you need to draw your frame. As I said, I decided to have two centimeters or in inches it is three quarter of inch frame. So that's what I draw here. I took my ruler and for beginners, this was the best spent money, I have to say. I cut it already a few times, so I'm trying to find exactly the same ruler now because I'm a little bit damaged the sides. But this was well, well spent money. This ruler, I think it's called quilting ruler, um, if I do remember that right. I think Tim Holtz has some something similar on his ruler. This ruler has these lines and they are in the size of one quarter of inch, one quarter of inch, one quarter of inch, one quarter of inch, which makes your uh, drawing and measuring much more easy. So what I did, I did use this ruler. I counted those two centimeters, which is three quarter of inch, which is this line here. And that line I used to draw my pattern. This is three quarter of inch, so I draw a line. Flip it over, again place it to that side. If you don't have a ruler like this, you just need to make points in the size you decided to have that frame. Make a point, draw these lines, and then cut off this inside window, uh, the inside rectangle. Once you have your frame, you can wrap it to your newspapers. So I'm gonna take a glue here. I'm gonna take uh, this tacky glue because it's brilliant. It's uh, Anita tacky glue, but you can use any kind of PVA glue and place it to your background. I would like to have there at least piece of that, uh, that crossword. I think I'm gonna have a look on this like this get there
and from here I'm gonna slide my cutting mat underneath take my knife and same like we did before with the cover cut the rectangle inside try to cut these sides smaller than is your frame that way uh, you will don't overlap with paper the opposite side when you will glue it on your frame so I try to make these these sides this paper slightly smaller than it's your frame this one cut the corners and also cut the paper around and again try to keep that edge of wrapping paper smaller than is your frame so now he be here because it's a uh, very light chipboard and because I will use anyway <laughs> corner punch for the corners I don't want to have their sharp corners so I will cut the corners anyway I know I don't have to keep here any kind of paper around the corner so I'm cutting the paper exactly from the corner in small angle and again I'm gonna add the glue and fold all these and cover my frame with the newspaper so you will have beautifully covered frame I'm gonna let this dry my other frame it's still drying I can feel it so I'm gonna let this dry as well and I'm gonna move back my base uh, I would like to have quite dark uh, book cover before I will use my paints I'm gonna be using uh, acrylic paint black acrylic paint for my book cover I'm gonna prepare my book cover for some effects I would like to achieve I do have here my, <laughs> my lovely palette I do have there also acrylic paint already prepared I'm just gonna light it up so before I will paint my book cover with uh, black acrylic paint I'm gonna prepare it for that painting uh, I just check my book cover and it does have few flaws like this one and the edges here and edge here I can either put there more in uh, more glue which I actually don't want or I can take straight away sanding tool you can use any sanding tool you will find at home and just sand the edges of, of the newspaper with your sanding tool I put quite a lot of layers of that newspaper on that so I'm pretty sure that there still will be a lot of newspapers underneath and if not I will cover it with black ink uh, black acrylic paint anyway if you don't have sanding tool like this maybe you do have a nail file that's actually my uh, favorite tool for sanding anything it does have softer you know uh, a softer this grinding paper and uh, I'm not sure if they call it grinding paper sanding paper and it's just you know better to hold in <laughs> so I'm gonna sand anything what I don't like or everything what I don't like here and because I did use quite a lot of glue when I did glue these in newspapers it go uh, quite nicely to sand it down and maybe I will try to sand also the edges here a little bit you know when I put kind of like collages of my papers so there can be kind of like a big step between papers and if I will paint it with black uh, black color it can make not nice uh, coating so I'm gonna sand anything I want to sand to make it smooth and as you can see I'm quite hard on it and the print it still stays still and it's just because when I used my 
glue <coughs> and I glued that uh, paper on my uh, template or that chipboard. I went with that glue over my newspapers as well. So print is stable now uh, just because of that glue. That's a uh, thing what you maybe will use also when you are making uh, small embellishments. If you will put glue on the top as well, it will save the print. I know many people say that uh, newspaper print is not stable and it's true. It's <laughs> catching my fingers quite fast but once you will put some glue over it or some uh, medium over it it will make it stable <clears throat> so I think I'm prepared with the edges of my paper and one more thing if you ever did uh, kind of like wooden uh, distressing or effect on wooden painting with distressing and with that aging of paint maybe you saw this idea that you will use uh, some wax or paraffin i'm using this candle and uh, i will rub the candle on spots which i would like to kind of uncover from black paint later so anywhere where i would like to see actually those newspapers later i'm gonna rub the candle on And I never tried that, to be honest. So <laughs> I want to see if that works. I think I'm done and we will see I'm not sure if I will even remember where I placed the candle well hopefully yes so now I'm gonna take my acrylic paint and brush and I'm just gonna paint all this with my black acrylic paint and then I will let it dry Meanwhile, the book cover is drying, the paint is drying. I'm gonna prepare some uh, bits and pieces to decorate that cover. I found this one <laughs> and I really love that in our newspaper. So I'm gonna put this aside. Here is my frame so I can kind of like, you know, take the frame as my measurement. If the image will be big or small, if I, I will like it. These two numbers, perfect for decoration. Just gonna flip through quickly just to one more time to show you that you can have a look on your newspapers and see amazing things here hotspots awesome nice color nice shape perfect size so that probably would be my choice oh my look at these all these banners i will say they are perfect Perfect for decorating here, these numbers. If I will cut out only these numbers and cut them on the half, you know, and keep separate uh, these numbers, I can make uh, some beautiful collage from, uh, you know, put few images together. Here, blue numbers, perfect, nice size for my journal. So go to have a look. You will find really so many, so many amazing things. Uh, I like that... Um, you know gray and white print so free today perfect numbers perfect so anything here this one it's super for for decorating so it's really so many images you can use in your journal and don't be afraid that uh, it's from newspaper I've been googling, I uh, had a comment that 
the newspapers uh, contain some toxins, toxics. Uh, so I did Google that because I didn't Google that before. I didn't know. So I did go Google all these informations and it did kind of surprise me. Yes, print contains some toxic old print, old newspapers and old books contain uh, things like uh, lead, um, arsenic, chromium, mercury, copper, iron, barium. So, <laughs> yes, old books, old newspapers can have in the print something like this. What I did Google, you have to make your research and maybe you will find even more information. I didn't spend that much time to make like, I don't know, two hours research. I just typed and what appeared the first I did read actually. So what was there that new newspapers are mostly free from any kind of toxin. That makes the print not that much stable. What I did understand from the column I read. But I'm, I'm kind of solving this issue with my newspapers when I'm applying on the top of my glue. That makes the print more stable. And also I had a comment that if I will use iron and I will iron it uh, over the newspapers, the print will kind of like baked to the paper and will be much more stable. I didn't try that yet. I will try. And... Um, I forgot the name of who placed that comment. I know there was that uh, it was from Edwardian or Victorian uh, book with all kind of, you know, hits and tips. I think if I do remember that right. Thank you so much for all your advices and for all these amazing comments. It's brilliant to read that and it's brilliant to, te to, 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 to learn from that. So I'm going to cut out my images and I'm going to prepare them for decorating the cover. Here I do have leftovers from uh, my envelope, which I'm going to be using for reinforcing my embellishments. I think I do have everything I need. Uh, look, in stock report, there was, when I showed you this one, underneath was this strip, this way, and it will be perfect as washi tape. Use it as washi tape. And here, I didn't notice even before, uh, right under those banners were teeny mini small numbers which are perfect to add to my journals and sorry if is it upside down no it's the right way I don't have my reading glasses so I do have these images a little bit blurry <laughs> and look at these here so many numbers stock reports guys stock reports for numbers perfect so I'm gonna cut these images out and show you how cute labels you can do. So I do have fussy cut out all these little numbers and I'm gonna show you how you can kind of make something from nothing. I did fussy cut out also these dark images here and here I'm gonna save this. Look at that. I'm gonna kind of cut it with that uh, black print around. this way I'm gonna make it neat later so how you can make these little ones even more interesting maybe you do have at home a black cardstock or any kind of colored cardstock colored colored paper but if you don't if you really just start up and only what you have are newspapers or uh, leaflets from shops like Tesco and Asda and Lidl and uh, in America, what is it? Uh, Michaels, if, if they are still on, or Dollar uh, Three. You know, they always have some leaflets. Any kind of these numbers can be found there. Or any kind of uh, little banners like this can be found there. With prizes, with words like... Um, super offer or, or something you know just just take take it from there just grab your little number place it on darker background grab your scissors and do fussy cutting around with some kind of nice distance from the edge this one I took quite wide Okay, I will try to make it even. 
on all sides so just play with your uh, with your paper until you will be satisfied with the sizes of your cuts like i'm not totally satisfied here yeah go there evie come on make it better even with those small images okay you can make it much much better than i do now it looks definitely not right because it's too small and i think somewhere here uh, kind of ish start from bigger distance and go to smaller one and then just get up some piece of old cardstock and do exactly the same okay so what do you think i think it's not too bad right at least i think so <laughs> but i really like it and uh if you will take this as your base you can always make it even better there is so many uh, mixed media products you can use on this one and lately i found this uh, uv resin it's cured clear hard and i do have for that this uv lamp and it's uh, like a magic just gonna show you quickly just apply a little bit of that clear resin to your little label. Try to spread it neatly. Well, I'm not too straight with those sides. Then get up the lamp. And let it cure this UV resin uh, has a fluid when it's dry when it's cured it smells the best way how to work with this UV resin it's to have open window and to wear a mask it's the the best way how you can work with this one I'm not sure if there is something toxic but you know to protect yourself from any any wrong things just wear your mask and have uh, open window definitely have open window window which i do have open window and just put your lamp over the image i think i think i'm done and you do have oh sorry you do have sealed your little label if you will work ha uh, faster you know here i was talking so i was a little bit <laughs> more a little bit slower but if you will work faster and you will don't actually let soak the resin to that newspaper it will be much much uh, much much visible but i think it's really cute like this and you can create <clears throat> with this resin really cute banners if you will put that resin over these little thingies so that's just one little idea so i do believe this is dry completely you can see where i did scratched the paper and now i'm gonna give it dry i'm not sure if it will be good just wipe off the places where i added the wax or the candle or if i should sand it i know they always sanding those spots with sanding tool i'm gonna give it a try just wipe it yeah i think <laughs> oh no 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 uh-huh okay so it is possible to just wipe it off from those places from these spots where i have used um the wax uh, i think yeah well this is taking time so what you also can do take your sanding tool and just sand it
and yes it goes much much better on spots where I kind of kind of hardly used that uh, candle so I'm gonna wipe off any kind of dust and I do have here my frame I use that paper punch corner pa paper punch this one on all four corners and I do have here this one with what I found in all newspapers. I would like to get this somehow on all that back cover and over the spine to make it stronger. So I did glue the, this Millionaire Street piece on this t-shirt and I'm gonna sew it all around and cut the fabric right next to the edge. So I do have it sewn all together, glued and sewn all together. I'm gonna again kind of rip off the edges of that fabric underneath. And I do have hit this uh, beautiful frame and I think this one I would like to distress a little bit so I'm gonna take my tool dip it into distressing ink and just wipe that distress ink on the edges i also prepared few uh, images as my my embellishment and one of them are the clocks i found uh, i think in that previous video or video before <laughs> and my newspapers these ones I'm gonna try to use them somehow if you don't have a distress ink you can always use very strong coffee or tea and with brush brush it uh, kind of paint it over your uh, frame and let it dry that way you will have colored frame as well so now I'm gonna try to make some layout I do have here my frame I do have here this millionaire tree. I think I would like to have it this way. I do have these clocks. I can't use uh, pictures of people from the newspaper. They are mostly brand new with people who are living and I will have to go to ask them. And I'm not sure how they will feel if they, I will tell them, you will appear in my journal. <laughs> so for that, I'm going to take one picture, or one uh, paper doll from Tim Holtz collection. I love these dolls and I'm not using them as much as I want. So I think in this journal, they would be actually amazing. So if I will stand this guy here, and because he does have the hand this way. So I was thinking maybe these clocks can be somehow like you know under his hands and from my little collection of embellishments and look how cute these little banners looks with that uh, with that resin it's so amazing I do have here this hot spots that can be Under his leg, because, uh, his feet, because he's standing on something. What else I do have here? Oh, I do have these cute ones. Very small to writing, which I fussy cut out. That can be maybe one of these banners. Maybe here. Why not? And I do have. This I found, yeah, uh, Rodrem adver advertisement has also a section where they are writing about what did happen a hundred years ago. And they had this, look at that, it's so gorgeous. And a few pictures from the past. And there was this title, a hundred years ago, May 19, uh, 1923. It's awesome. So this can be right here, actually, or... Uh, I do have here this crossword or this crossing something. I have no idea the right the name of that. And I was thinking I can also put something on the back cover. And use these adverts to make it even 
more interesting. So maybe something like this. And all these numbers look awesome, backed with brown paper. So they are perfect embellishment. Okay, I think I'm gonna make a layout somehow like this. So I'm gonna put these pieces here and I'm gonna get a piece of acetate and put the acetate to that window first. You can find, uh, you can buy uh, acetate sheets or you can find acetate maybe in some packaging. Uh, I do have here this one. This came with the mirror. The mirror was inside, so you can find any kind of acetate sheets uh, in the packaging. Don't uh, don't throw it to the bin before you will decide to use it for your journals. I'm gonna cut a piece which will be bigger than this one. For gluing, I'm gonna be using double-sided tape. That's very good uh, supply for journal maker if you are a beginner and you are wondering if to buy or not to buy double-sided tape. I think here you can't go wrong. Even maybe you will don't use it every day, but there will be time when double-sided tape is very handy, especially if you need to glue acetate sheet somewhere because it's holding best the acetate sheets so I'm gonna press it in and glue there my uh, acetate sheet And press it again. Make sure it will hold nicely. So now to make sure I'm working with the right, uh, you know, top bottom. So the book cover will be this way. Here it will be closing. So here is top, here is bottom. That way I would like to decorate it. So here will be the frame. And I think I'm going to glue it there straight away because I don't think... Yeah, I don't think I have to do something between. So I'm going to put the glue on the frame and glue it on my book cover. And I'm going to try to manage to keep there that little view of inside uh, edges. Now about gluing this large piece. I would like to have it over the spine, but to make sure it will don't get crumpled here when it's folding, unfolding, uh, I'm gonna make for myself kind of like template from cardstock. So I do have here this piece from envelope and I'm gonna be using this to attached my sign, this sign, to that book cover. I'm going to cut the piece which is same size-ish. I think somewhere here. And I definitely don't want to have that piece uh, bigger on any uh, sides of this millionaire tree. I'm gonna cut it this way and also cut these corners here. So now I do have a little piece which will help me to reinforce the sign and measure this. I'm gonna place the sign the way I would like to see it on my book cover, which is probably this one, these dots here, these dots, oops, sorry, these dots here. It's strange how it's sitting, you know, how it's kind of matching. Picture from newspaper, what I'm doing here. <laughs> my cover. So, here I can see 
here it's starting the spine so till there I can have the chipboard like reinforcement of my millionaire street sign so this will be underneath here then the spine I'm gonna keep clear I'm not gonna put there anything it will be free so here and again here I can see where the spine starts from this side so somewhere close here and I'm gonna cut off this one and I do have two pieces which will reinforce the, the sign this one so I can glue it here and I can also glue it here So it will be somewhere here before I will start to glue anything here. I wanna have that this one. So I'm gonna make a position. Yeah, position is good. I know how now. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a glue and glue this down. Uh, for this gluing, I'm gonna take a mod podge because I know it's water resistant, it's holding really well, and I'm gonna glue it with mod watch and I'm gonna apply the glue here and here as well kind of to make sure it's on the edges and I think I will also add their sewing effect I like sewing on my journals kind of manage to make it in the middle so this one now put this back here and I'm gonna glue this little fella and I think yeah right here Okay. And because I went with that uh, glue on all all over of that back cover, I kind of need to spread it everywhere uh, to make color on my uh, on my book cover. Same. So I'm gonna go here as well. And when I'm with that Mod Podging, I'm gonna put a coat of the Mod Podge on this sign as well, just to protect the print. So I'm gonna let all this dry. So I think everything is dry now. Uh, I found in my stuff these brats. And I lost one now. <laughs> You will need to find it. These brats, uh, they do have kind of like screw heads. I do have three now. <laughs> so I'm going to find that fourth one. And I'm going to uh, add these brats to the corners. I would like to have them kind of in the similar spot. So what I'm going to do, I do have here a piece of cardstock. I'm going to poke the hole. I think somewhere here. And I'm going to use this one to poke the hole in all my four corners, kind of match it all together. And poke, flip it over, match it here. Oh, they should be in the same spot. Now flip it this way, match it here. And flip it opposite way and match it here. And 
And I'm gonna fix that these brands and they are in the silver color which I think it's not too bad but I would like to have it more in vintage style so I'm gonna fix these first so I do have here glue I do have a cinnamon, uh, the spice cinnamon. I do have here a little, my oops, <laughs> this way, my black acrylic paint. So first, I'm gonna apply a little bit of that black acrylic paint. let this dry now I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here and add there small amount of cinnamon You need to make kind of like a little little mesh and with this I'm gonna go over those screw heads and once it's kind of like nearly dry I'm gonna go with soft brush with a little bit of cinnamon on the on these hairs over this one again and press it in there and I think I'm I'm done Yeah, need to find again those screw heads. A little bit of cinnamon. Oh, come on. And it looks like this. So, uh, spice in your kitchen can make beautiful effects on your project. So, I'm gonna add a little bit around each of these screw heads. And I do have a little bit of rust on every corner maybe i will add a little bit more when i will uh, kind of revisit this journal in the end so now uh, i can put the glue either here or on the frame and i'm gonna place it right here And I'm gonna put glue here. I'm not gonna go till the end of this piece because it's peeking out a little bit here and I don't wanna mess up that end like this. And now it's time for all my embellishments. I added a little bit of that resin to those clocks as well. The pieces which I will add here on that acetate, I will use a double-sided tape on them. And I'm gonna place him right here, actually. Okay, now I can take something what I planted. 
under his feet. I think that was this one. Hot spots. And slide it under his feet. Yep, like this. And I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds just to make sure it will get glued. Now, uh, what is it? Commentary. Commentary and results. Okay. Commentary and results. I forgot those clocks. So now the clocks. And this one, right here. I am still letting letting dry all <laughs> that glue. So I'm not gonna move it too much yet. I'm gonna give it a try. This will be here. Oh, I forgot to put something here. I will need to figure it out. So that will be the closure. I do have here also the inside, but I'm not gonna place it there yet. So this will be book cover. And uh, I think I would like to have here some labels. I'm not sure about that yet. So still everything is in process. This is all done for today. The basic decoration using mostly newspapers. Just this one. It's not newspaper. That's Tim Holtz and of course Bratz. And the inside material. <laughs> but the, the, the images. Other images are from newspapers. So <laughs> I hope you did enjoy it. And I hope you will come back tomorrow to the... To probably maybe do a little bit more changes i'm not sure about them but to decorate inside i do have some uh, somewhere frame oh here i do have frame for inside and i would like to kind of go around do not have there too much blue i like blue but not this way so to decorate that inside and then put the cover together probably i will see thank you so much for jumping in today and spending your time with me I hope you found some inspiration, maybe some new idea, uh, maybe some new technique. Uh, these videos are not for full projects, they are for a short projects and to make a journal it takes a time. So something like this can be done in one, can be done in one video but very short way. And if you want to see all process what I'm doing mostly on all my journals, <laughs> this is it. It takes a time. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and I will see you soon. Bye.